Welcome to Dry Fire Monday, everyone. I hope you and your family are staying healthy, safe, and physically distant while still getting some social time because of the old inner tubes. Figure we're all, most of us at home right now, and so working on a little quarantine dry fire, one of the best things that I think we can work on as private citizen concealed carriers is our draw to first shot. It is so important to our understanding as concealed carriers is getting that gun out quickly and putting the first shot on target. Of course, the only way we're gonna know what our capabilities are is if we actually get some objective measures. So we're gonna do that today, go back to the beginning of building a consistent, efficient and therefore fast draw to first shot. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. So if you're following the main channel, I'm sure you saw this last week. I had a video on the channel showcasing proper times to counter ambush in an armed robbery. And one of the things we talked about there is having a reliable, consistent 1.5 second draw to first shot or faster. There were a couple of opportunities for a 2.0 draw to first shot as well. And if you know what your draw to first shot generally takes you, then you can know what what is your go signal? What is your opportunity to counter ambush? Well, of course, the only way you're going to do that is if you actually get a timer out and you know how to do that. But first, before we even get into that, we're gonna talk about building an efficient draw to first shot. So I'm going to show you uh, everything about that from an appendix carry position first, because that's how I carry. I think that especially for new shooters, it is the safest, most reliable, and easiest way to carry. And so I think it has a lot of advantages because especially as we get older, our shoulder uh, flexibility goes down. And so getting back to a gun strong side gets a little bit harder. Uh, I think it's easier to defend in uh, you know combative uh, stuff or entangled gunfights and all those things. So I'm gonna show appendix carry first because I think more and more people are doing that. But for those who carry strong side, I'm going to get to strong side. So hang in there with me. So let's talk first about appendix carry. The things that we absolutely have to do in order to get a gun out on target and press a shot off. Again, of course, that first hit is our biggest concern. So the thing that we have to do first is, is defeat our cover garment. We're going to assume that we're carrying concealed here and not openly carrying. That's another whole nother kettle of fish. Uh, certainly appendix carry, don't know a lot of people that open carry appendix. So we gotta get rid of our cover garment. Now there's a couple ways to do that. You can grab for the hem. The problem with the hem, of course, is that you have different shirts with different hem lengths. And so I don't really like that because uh, I will tell you in my dry fire a few months ago, um, I was doing just that, went for the hem of my garment and punched myself square in the twig and berries. And that was a bad day, ended my dry fire and forever cured me of wanting to grab the hem. So if I'm going to grab, so that that is either I'm starting from like a, a you know a hands up surrender posture. Hey man, I don't want any trouble, whatever. Now I'm not talking about you know a big surrender like this. You might end up in a big surrender like this, but I've never seen a draw kind of start from here. Everybody kind of creeps it down. So hey man, I don't want any problems, whatever. That hand out surrender posture is one. I've also never seen a gunfight start here. Like you know I see people all the time. They're like John, you know when you're going to time, you better put your hands at your side so you're not cheating. Um, I've literally never seen a gunfight. Now imagine this as well. If you just saw somebody just standing there and they were just standing like this, like just in a general public sense and they're just standing there. Does that make you feel weird? Where you're like, dude, that is so unnormal. It's so abnormal, right? People will stand with their hands behind their backs. They will absolutely stand fig leaf. I do this all the time. They'll stand here with their hands in their pockets, something like that. They'll stand there with their arms crossed. You know, these are the kind of the, the places, but we never just stand there with our hands at our sides. So that's one you could do if you wanted. I don't care. Um, I do the fig leaf all the time. Now, if I do the fig leaf, I absolutely cheat and grab my cover garment. But guess what? In public all the time, I do that anyways. I stand around like this and if I'm hanging out, just waiting for someone in public, just doing something, standing around doing nothing. I will cheat that cover garment literally all the time. So uh, that's a perfectly acceptable. But if you are not holding your cover garment for whatever reason, you ain't got other stuff in your hands, you got your phone out, you're out talking to people, you got your keys, whatever, that's fine. Instead of grabbing for your hem, grab your belly button because you never have to wonder as to where it is. Your body has a proprioceptive index that it knows where your belly button is. So here's what I do. I grab a handful of shirt at my belly button. Then I bring that hand up here to clear this cover garment. So the thing I have to do is get this cover garment out of the way, grab a handful of that and do so. Then I have to get a grip on this gun and I need to get a full firing grip on this gun. I need to get at least my fingers around it. Now a full firing grip, that's a technical term. Uh, and I actually draw from a claw grip now, but I need to get my fingers around this gun. If I see people all the time, the gun is jammed down so far that they can't get their fingers around the gun. And so they get like kind of like a grip like this. They get this gun kind of out weird. And then when the gun starts coming out, they got to futz their grip back into place. And that is not what I want. 
safely, carefully. So instead, what I want to do is I want to get this cover garment cleared, my hand on this gun, the gun out, let go of the cover garment, get my hands both on the gun, drive the gun out, see my sights, press my shot, and get enough uh, press. I will verify for you that, again, my firearm is unloaded, uh, empty, and all that stuff. So again, drive the gun out, see my sights, press my shot. Okay, so those are the things that I have to do. So let's think about doing them efficiently. So if I'm going to clear this cover garment, the best place from an appendix carry position to do so efficiently is to grab a hold from wherever I am and I don't have to move anything, no matter pretty much unless my arm is like scratching myself behind my back or something like that, my arms out here, whatever. Uh, what I wanna do is anchor my elbow to my rib cage and grab a hold. I don't have to move other than that. Now I bring that up here to my sternum. I bring it up right to uh, my xiphoid process right here, right where my rib cage comes together at the bottom. I see people that pull way up here like this because they say, hey, wait a minute, you know, I have longer shirts or whatever. Now, if you're going way down at knee height, you're going to have a problem. All right, I'm going to tell you that. But for most people, like this is, a, you know, kind of a normal hemline or whatever. The way that I defeat that is by grabbing a fistful. Do you see how much that brought my shirt up right there uh, all by itself? Didn't do anything else other than just get a handful at my belly button and, and pinch and grab. Now, I also like to turn because when my hand comes up and the gun comes up, this is the place that it's going to receive it. So my hand is out like this, so then my gun can receive that and go from here instead of me having to turn. So if I do those two at once, one, two, notice how I've already actually cleared the gun. Now I get this so that I get a little bit more margin for success and because this is where I'm going to be when my hands come together. Then I got to get my hand to the gun. So from wherever I am, you notice here what I've done, again on this side from appendix, is I have anchored my elbow to me, gotten a fistful of cover garment and cleared it. That's the most efficient way to do this. And if you do it in that efficient way, it will be faster when we speed it up. Now then, to get my hand on the gun, again, I could start from way out here, whatever, but with appendix carry, I'm going to anchor my elbow to my rib cage and drive my hand straight down to the gun. One of the things you're going to notice on that is when you're doing that, your wrist is going to be not locked, okay? So I know a lot of people, they want to have their wrist at the same place they're going to shoot the gun, and that's going to make you slower, because what you're going to do to do that is you're going to really get this around, and there's no reason to do that yet, because when you're going to get the hand out to that position is once the gun comes out. Out. Now I'm going to rotate the gun into that position and go from there. You don't have to have your wrist locked when you go to get your hand on the gun. It's not necessary. So clear to this. Again, anchor the elbow and come to here. This is something I tend to do. I tend to kick this, uh, this uh, elbow out a little bit. And what that does is it makes me slower. It makes me about a tenth, tenth and a half slower. So I, I'd really strongly encourage you, if you're an appendix carrier, efficiency matters. That what Scott Jedlinski calls no unnecessary frenetic motion. So again, we're just going to keep our elbow anchor here, get a fistful, bring that up here, get a hand on the gun. Now when the gun comes out, I'm going to actually bounce that gun out of there, bring it up to the place where my hands are going to join. Where do my hands join? We, we play this game. You got to play it with me. Ready? So you got to do this right now. You may not be able to do it with your phone out in your hands, whatever, but play this game. And you got to play it without cheating. Promise me you'll play? All right, here it is. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. This is where you join your hands. Now, some people that's a little farther in, some people it's a little farther out, some people it's a little lower, some people it's a little higher. Wherever it is <clears throat> that your body says, my hands come together here, that's where I want you to join your hands because that's your natural place that you're not having to retrain yourself and index, okay? So now we're gonna efficiently and effectively get here. We're going to grab and clear. We're going to get a full hand on the gun, at least our fingers around the gun. That's the design of the holster and all those things. Then I'm going to get the gun out. I'm happy and I know it. So notice what I did here is I just let this go. Okay, I have a habit of throwing that and when I do it costs me time. So let it go. Get your support hand on the gun. Drive the gun forward. Prep your trigger. See your sights. Press your shot. That's what we're going to do to get our proper shot. Now, when we drive it out there, see our sights, press our shot, get another sight picture. Great, let your trigger reset and then see that I can still see my target and all that stuff. Reset your trigger. Put it away. Now, we are not working quickly here. We are simply working efficiently. I want us to work efficiently. Now, eventually we'll speed it up for sure. But if we can get efficient, then we're eliminating all that unnecessary frenetic motion. Then when we go fast, it will be faster, not because slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I've seen smooth be herky, you know, be slow, and I've seen smooth be fast and herky jerky be fast. But because if we go slowly, we can 
find all of the inefficiencies, remove them, then we have the most efficient movement, and then when we speed it up, we will have the least amount to make fast, and therefore it will be faster on the clock, okay? So, don't you love y'all? All right, so, once again, from this position, I can cheat this here to my, my fig leaf, I have no problems with that, I can be from the hands up. If I'm on a fig leaf, all I'm gonna do is gather here at, uh, up to my place right here at my xiphoid process. That's all I'm gonna do right here, is just gather. That's easy stuff, and I've cleared my gun. If I'm not, and I'm here at a surrender posture, hey man, I don't want any problems. Again, keep my elbow anchored. This one comes down, that one comes down right behind it. Notice that again, I've, I've got a lot of shirt. Gun comes out, hands come together, drives forward, press the shot when I see my sights. Don't have to wait. Great, get a second sight pressure, reset my trigger, do it again. Okay, for you strong siders, I'm gonna switch up gear just a little bit. This is um, a VP9, it's actually the first VP9 that I ever owned, and uh, it is going to be carried strong side in a Black Arch Protoss, which I know somebody's gonna say, oh John, that's a hybrid, and you say you hate hybrids. It's actually not a hybrid. If you look here real closely, I'm gonna do a gear review on it. It's actually a Kydex holster. It's got the, the trigger guard completely covered by Kydex. It happens to have a soft mesh backer, and that's fine. It's a Kydex holster. So, strong side can work, can be okay, so let's, work from this. Okay, so now we are strong side. You can see, you know, it's kind of hard to see because black on black, I get it, my bad. But we're following the mechanics of my arms and hands. You don't really need to see the gun in there. Okay, so again, from the strong side, what we're going to do is we're going to do similar stuff. But we do have to cheat over to clear our cover garment. I do know people who like to come strong side and when they do, they will come this way. If, if you're gonna clear strong side, you take your support hand and you just put it on your chest right here to, to receive the gun. And if you're gonna clear strong side, the way that we generally do that is we take our thumb and we go under our cover garment, clear up and around, and then drive back to the gun, okay? I still like a claw grip from there because it's an inside the waistband holster right up against your skin. I actually prefer the though, if I can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive over with my support hand and then grab, pinch like I did before, and then come up and around to my uh, sternum. Again, same place. That allows me plenty of clearance on the gun, and then I use whatever it is I have to here to drive back to get a hand on the gun. I got to clear the gun. I got to get the gun out of the holster, put it in my hands, and go. Now then, what we're gonna do that is, I, again, I come over and then this elbow here, instead of driving it forward, instead of driving it out like this, I wanna drive it straight back because the shortest track and most efficient way here is to drive it back to the gun and then drive it straight forward, okay? So drive it back and then forward. The more I go out this way, this elbow has to come back and I've gotta find another plane of, of uh, stability. It's not an easy thing to do. So again, I'm here. I'm going to come over, grab, clear to the spot, drive my elbow back and get a hold. Now you're going to probably feel a pinch in your elbow doing that. When I get the gun out of the holster, it comes up and out as it joins with my second hand, drives the gun up, sees my sight, presses my trigger. So I'm doing really the same thing. Press that carefully, safely, carefully, easily holster, okay? Do it again, so we're again from this place, we're gonna take our time, we're gonna make sure that we are efficient as we can possibly be, we're gonna come over, clear back, get our hand on the gun, drive it forward, see our sights, press our trigger. Safely, carefully, holster. Make sense? Efficiency is the key. Okay, I'm gonna go back to appendix carry because that's what I do every day, and we're gonna do a little bit of mantis work in our draw to first shot in our um, uh, holster work here. So uh, let's go ahead and hit the record button on this. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to go back here, put that in the gun, and I wanna show you something about when we speed it up, right? So the efficiency issue, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have a habit of winging this elbow out. So I have a habit of coming here and kicking this elbow out getting the gun and working. And so I'm gonna do five reps of that on the clock so that you can see where it is. And then I'm gonna do five reps of keeping my elbows close and we'll see what the difference is. Stand by. Gonna wing this elbow out. <laughs> Saw my sight, did okay there. Now I'm operating at my speed. You don't have to operate at my speed, Stand okay? By. I know it's hard for you to see. <laughs> eh. Saw my sight there, it would have been a Charlie. I'm gonna do one from over here so you can see it a little bit better. Stand by. Yeah, saw my sight real good on that one, in fact. Back over here, get two more. Stand by. Yeah, pretty good, I, I, I'm okay there. It's pretty fast, actually. Stand by. 
Now what I'm noticing is it's making my shoulder hitch a little bit, okay? So my last two on those actually was sub one second, nine nine and nine eight. My average was a 103. I'm not gonna argue with that, right? Um, but I do want you to notice on one of those, my grip at the bottom was a 0.41, which is way slow. Uh, so that was where I was seeing some problems. But I wasn't waiting on the target. So you see the brown there, the target, the one at 0.04, I did really well at. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with those. In fact, that's about my speed right now. But let's see now if I just sit down here and I don't uh, wing my elbow up. Let's see if it makes it any better. Those are pretty good numbers. I don't know that I'm going to get a lot faster than that. We're going to find out. Stand by. Ooh, saw my sight too. Stand by. Saw it. Would have been very high edge of the alpha. Stand by. Okay, like that. Stand by. Bad grip, bad grip, and that messed me up. Didn't get the stab out of the holster that I wanted. These things happen. Stand by. Saw it, feel good about it. One more. Stand by. Whew, that was spicy. Okay. Now if we look, my total time now, again, these are in dry fire, not in live fire. Uh, a 0 0.90 average as opposed to a 1.03 average. So I'm about 13% faster when I get the efficiency in there. Now you notice um, I didn't have any dwell on target on any of them. You actually see that I didn't have the one grip problem that I did before. My pull is quite consistent. My horizontal, very consistent. Everything in here looking pretty good. That one that I didn't have a great grip was my 0.98. And I said so. Other than that, an 8.5, a 9.1, an 8.7. So hey, I mean, uh, these are good numbers. And uh, what I want you to see is, is that when I really play with my efficiency, I can get efficient. So what does that mean for you? What I want you to do is I want you to watch yourself and, and start to look over your inefficiencies. A couple of things that I see people doing all the time when they go to get the gun, they move themselves this way to get themselves out of the way. That's probably not best. Or when they're going strong side, they go this way to get to the gun. When you're moving this, you're going to have to move back. So I'd suggest you not do that. It will make you inefficient. The way that you see what you do is have your spouse or yourself set it up on your desk or whatever and take video of yourself on your phone. If you can, do that on high speed. Do it on, you know, uh, uh, either 240, you know, you can do it on your iPhone at like 4K at 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second in 1080 or something crazy. And then watch yourself as you go through. Do a couple draws, be honest about it, and then watch and go, where's my inefficiencies? Are my elbows coming away? Am I moving all over the place? Am I hunching down? Am I, what motions am I doing that I can get out of my draw to first shot? Then use your timer, get a little bit of more efficiency efficiency and see how much progress you can make. This week, I really suggest, man, listen, It'll if you're working from home like I am and I normally do anyways, make sure you put on pants to put on your holster and that's a good thing. Make sure you get up, take a shower, do those things. Then make gives you a goal for the day. Hey, I'm going to get some dry fire in today, work on my efficiencies and that's going to make me faster. Then number three, you're going to know what your draw to first shot time is and that will help you that you understand if God forbid it's your worst day and you get in a defensive shooting, then you will know from watching the main channel what you need to see in order to launch your counter ambush. Hope it helps you this week, guys.